Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another tutorial. Today we are going to be showing how to dual boot Windows 7 alongside Windows 10. Now before you do this, I would highly suggest going on your browser of choice and going to the Microsoft System Requirements page for Windows 10. Basically, if you can run Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, you're pretty much good for Windows 10. Basically a minimum processor of 1 gigahertz, so 1 gigabyte of RAM at least 16 gigabytes of free hard disk space. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a separate partition on the computer so we can dual boot Windows 7 alongside Windows 10 without disrupting our current setup on the Windows 7 system we are on right now. So what we're going to want to do is navigate over to the start button, type in disk management, click on create and format hard disk partitions, if we blow this up full screen here, we see we have our C drive. It's only 25 gigabytes. It's a rather small hard drive to begin with. But as we saw on the website, the minimum requirement is 16 gigabytes for the Windows 10 machine, so that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our hard drive here. We're going to click on shrink volume. This may take a few moments for it to check the available disk space that we have. Okay, so we can see now the total size. This is what we currently have right now. So 25,000 megabytes, so about 25 gigabytes. Now, due to the size of this hard drive, I'm gonna make it a little bit below the system requirements. You should have 16 gigabytes. So if you do 16 times 24 here, so let's do the math here, so 16 times, oh, I'm sorry, 1,024 megabytes is in a gigabyte. So you should really at a minimum have at least 16,384 megabytes in this amount allotted to shrink into the separate partition. However, our hard drive is too small, so we're gonna make it a little bit smaller than that. I'm gonna do about seven megabytes for right now. Um, we'll see if it works. Um, but on your computer, your hard drive should be considerably larger than 25 gigabytes, so that really should not be an issue. Okay, so now we see we have our unallocated space. This is where our Windows 10 system is going to go. So now all we have to do is we're going to close out of this. If you have a Windows 10 installer CD or disk, if you have taken it from an ISO file, burn it to a CD or DVD and we're going to restart the computer and we are going to boot from the Windows 10 setup installation. Now as the computer is restarting, press the F2 or sometimes the delete key to launch the setup utility window so we can change the boot order and boot from the CD. So what, how I would do this is scrolling over to the boot tab and then adjusting the order of which these items will boot onto the computer. So what you want to do is you want to move the CD-ROM drive up by clicking on the on the plus key. Um, just follow the instructions in the bottom horizontal panel below on the BIOS to get more detailed information about how to navigate through the BIOS. And then we can click F10, which will save it. And we're going to click Enter on that. And now we see that we can press any key to boot from the CD, which we will. We are launching the Windows 10 installation. Now, it is important to note that we are installing the technical preview right now. However, the process should be identical when Windows 10 is released to the public. So now just make sure that all of this stuff is correct to so the language, the time, and currency format, um, and keyboard or input method are all correct. Click on Next. Now click on install. So virtually it's like we are installing Windows as a fresh install, but you'll see in a moment that we are going to install it on the partition that we just created. So now we're going to accept the licensing terms. Now it's very important you want to click on custom, install Windows only. Um, you want to click on that. And now we see we have drive zero unallocated space. Now it's important to know during the break I actually did go back and change the partition size because it was too small. Um, it doesn't have to be 16 gigabytes. I think it was somewhere around 8 or 9 gigabytes was the actual minimum requirement. But I kind of just went back and changed that. So like I said, you guys shouldn't really have a problem with that. Just make sure it's 16 gigabytes. Just try and stick with that at a minimum. But anyway, we're going to click on new. 
uh, we see our size we have 11,454 megabytes like I said I did change this number I went back and up the size of our partition so now we're going to click apply and we're going to see our type of partition change to primary we see the total size is 11.2 gigabytes we're going to click on next and there we go we see we have not gotten any error message um, if your partition is too small like I ran into when I just tried doing this earlier um, it'll tell you that your hard disk space is not large enough and it'll tell you what the minimum requirement is however we can see that Windows 10 is installing right now so what I'm actually going to let this do is just pretty much keep going and once we are done installing the basic framework for Windows 10 I will come back we can see that Windows 10 is finishing its installation alright now we are more to the personalized settings of Windows 10 um, express settings um, if we actually click on custom settings we can disable certain things like location we can disable Windows tracking of our location history but apps user advertising ID sense typing and inking data it just disable like pretty much all of this tracking information that's personally what I do um, I keep that on as you turn that off that off and I mean it's some of these are optional I would go through personally I'm just kind of doing like a rough install but we can see that it's going pretty quick it says just a moment it's just finalizing our installation under who owns this PC I'll just say I do I'll click on next another just a moment um, you make a Microsoft account uh, we'll just skip over that. I think you actually need a Microsoft account in order to create a Microsoft account to access some of the new features of Windows 10. But we're just going to put something right there. I mean, Okay, so we're going to let this roll for a minute. I'll be uh, right back. Hello, everybody. I am back. We can see that Windows 10 is booted up. We have all of our features going on right now. Uh, looks like we have our browsers. Uh, it's still named Project Bar, and this might be a little bit... We have our new web browser right here. New recycling bin icon, a few other things, but that's not really what this is about. Um, let's just restart the computer here. So, right click, let's restart. Hello, everybody. As our computer is rebooting, I would highly suggest clicking F2 to enter our BIOS again. Let's go under boot and let's move the hard drive back up to the top here. So, we will boot from the hard drive as our first selection. And at this time, you can remove your DVD CD. We don't need that disk anymore. So now click F9 to save our defaults. Now F10 will get us out of the BIOS. Now hit enter to confirm the changes and exit the BIOS. After changing the order back to the hard drive as our first device that we were booting from and removing the Windows 10 CD or DVD, now we are given a choice to choose which operating system we would like to boot from. We either do Windows 10 or Windows 7 and uh, we could also change defaults or choose other options by clicking on this but just for the point of showing that we can get back to our initial Windows 7 we are going to click on the Windows 7 button here and now we are going to start booting up Windows 7 okay so there we go everybody we've just booted back up into Windows 7 everything is fine that our partition is actually showing up right here and we can see that our local drive for our Windows 7 system has shrunk a little bit to about 14 gigabytes but I mean it's pretty much it everybody I hope everybody enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe for more and I will talk to everybody later